Hello. Hey, the seven biggest surprises about healthy eating. That's what we're about to talk about. This was fun because Seth questioned me after he wrote most of it. And it's usually what he does. And he says, I need some more ideas. And so I'm giving him my ideas and they're the ones he's already written down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we've been working together long enough. And I have a basic understanding of nutrition anyway. But you, I always like to run stuff by you because you are so much better at like the actual practical application of everything and the details that I'm unclear on. I like to make sure that what I'm writing nutritionally is actually accurate. <laughs> yes, I'm, fa I'm the fact checker. For You're, I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> fact. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So I'm glad that you approved of what I wrote and we did make some changes to it, but nothing major. I didn't, I didn't write anything that was so awful that I had to start over. Yeah. I don't know that. I mean, I'd tell you if you did. Well, yeah. You yeah. wouldn't want us putting out something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's why. Anyway, let's get to the surprises. <laughs> so this is a blog. If you'd rather read the blog, we can give you the link. Just let us know. But we're also going to talk beyond like in between. We're going to, we're going to talk in between the lines and give you some extra details on it. Uh, but we're just going to get started here. Even if you already eat pretty well most of the time, which we hear from a lot of people that they do, there are always ways to improve and mm -hmm. eat healthier. Uh, and, and that probably isn't a surprise. If you were to stop and think about it, even if you feel like, okay, I eat pretty well most of the time, I'm sure you could come up with a few aspects of nutrition where you kind of struggle to get things right. Everybody does. And what may surprise you though, is finding out that even if you only improve your eating habits by a little bit, the benefits that you'll experience are much more significant than you realize. Benefits that make the little bit of extra effort that we're talking about feel like they're actually worth your time as opposed to the lots of extra effort that uh, some diets put you on and then you're like, well, that was a waste of time. I didn't do anything for me. So we're going to go over what those seven specific benefits are that I think are going to surprise you the most. But first, I'm going to tell you something that um, I've changed about myself and just the idea that even a nutrition coach can eat a little bit better. So we're not just talking about you. We're talking about Everybody, ourselves included, can eat a little bit better. So over the past 10 to 15 years, I've changed a lot. Um, I started actually by working. When we got married, his cookbook he had was a man, a can, and a plan. <laughs> yeah, well, my mom gave me that when I left the house because she knew that would be the most that I could possibly <laughs> manage. Okay, so he's changed a lot. <laughs> when I actually intentionally started working on it, though, the, one of the first things that I changed was eating enough food so that I wouldn't binge on nights and weekends. Or entire pizzas. Right, yeah. or a family-sized lasagna yeah. all to myself. It, you would be surprised how many people, even if it's not that extreme, a lot of people would benefit by eating more rather than less. And that's something that we've talked about elsewhere. So if you wanna know why adding food to your diet can help you lose weight, let us know. Um, Beyond that, I've also worked at different times on getting enough protein, on improving the overall quality of the foods that I'm eating. I even made very specific changes that helped me lower my cholesterol by 20%. So, of course, it helps that I have a nutrition coach. Uh, it doesn't always help that she's my wife. No. <laughs> but I do rely on her a lot, not just for writing blogs, but for my own guidance. Um, that does help. As much as I have improved over the years, I still don't eat enough vegetables, right? Yes. <laughs> but I still, I eat a lot more than I used to and a lot more than what most people do. Mm -hmm. Big part of that is because you do a lot of the cooking. Yes. But I also, I include them in my own ways too that I wouldn't have otherwise. Sure. So um, I can still make better choices too. Like if I improve some of my skills, I'm a step up from just a can and throwing things in the microwave, but I, I could overall do better if I made some more cooking skills. And, I, and I've done some of that too. Sure. My point is, even though that, even though Megan and I do this whole fitness thing for a living, we, we are, we have plenty of areas ourselves where we can improve. And I know Megan, we're not even going to go into it unless you want to mention something, you would admit the same thing about yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. So I would say also like we don't strive for perfection too. Yeah. That's just not we don't try to eat 100% perfect. 
perfect. That's not where we're at either when we're trying to get better. Right. But even if you already do eat pretty well, if you're struggling to lose weight, if you don't know how to feed yourself and your family, like without cooking separate meals, or if you're just not as consistent as you like, there is always some next step that you can do um, to, to get to those points, to get the results that you want. So, and if you do it right, I think that you might be surprised by these seven benefits of healthy eating that we're going to list now. So number one. Oh, it's a terrible drum roll. That's why I'm not the musician. <laughs> we'll fix it. I'll throw in a drum roll and post. And edit it in there. No, we won't. No, we won't. <laughs> Number one, it should make your life easier. There are far fewer hard rules for eating healthy than you think. You don't have to fit a square peg into a round hole. You can, mm. you can make healthy eating fit your lifestyle and your food preferences, your schedule, your allergies, what, anything. Of course, you could just devour whatever you want, and you might think, well, I, why don't I just do that? That seems easier than eating healthy. Why is eating healthy here easy, easier than doing nothing and just eating what I want? The truth is it's not easier because, first of all, that will take a toll on your entire life. Your health, how you feel. Physical, mental, emotional. All of that, yeah. yeah. All of that is going to affect your relationships, your job, your parenting, your social life, the, everything. The way you feel about yourself. Yep. Even. Yeah. yeah. So it may seem easier to not think about food in the moment, but the rest of your life is actually going to be harder. On top of that, whether it's last minute or a week in advance, at some point you will have to make a decision about food. And whenever that comes up, there will be an opportunity to make a slightly better choice. And since there are countless strategies to make healthy eating work on your own terms, uh, making those slightly better choices doesn't have to be something that's super inconvenient and it's going to have a positive effect on your life, on the quality, enjoyment, and your ease of living. So the bottom line with this uh, surprise number one is that if you follow, if you try to follow a diet with unrealistic rules that just add stress to your life, that's actually not healthy eating. Even if you were to lose weight with it, it's still not healthy. Yeah, there is a, a negative... A mental thing that happens when the more strict a diet gets. Yep. Number two. Supr surprise benefit about eating healthy. Number two, you won't be hungry. Uh, that's always... I don't know that there's been one client that has said, I'm starving, I'm so hungry. I'm, like, I'm actually not that hungry. Most people are surprised. Yeah. That. Yeah. If Now, if you want to lose weight, or once you do lose weight and you want to maintain it, either way... In either, either side of that, there's no reason to let hunger control you. So, and, and like Megan said, a lot of people are surprised that they actually get to eat even more food how, than what they normally do. Or, or how okay they feel with w what they're eating and their hunger levels. Like, it's pretty amazing when you do it a good way. Yeah. Now, I want to address both sides of those quickly. For weight loss specifically, I already mentioned at the beginning that one of the first things I worked on was eating more so that I didn't binge on nights and weekends. Mm -hmm which is not an uncommon problem. Even if you do have to cut back at some point to continue losing weight, if you have realistic expectations, in other words, you are like, okay, I'm just trying to get to where I lose a little bit of belly fat and get a flatter stomach. You're not trying to become like a stage ready bodybuilder and have chiseled abs. Not me. Assuming your, your expectations are realistic in the first place and getting hangry should not be something that's a common occurrence. I'm not saying that it will never happen, because nobody's perfect. Yeah. Well, things happen where you can't have a meal at a regular scheduled time. Because life, kids, whatever. Yeah. And with weight loss specifically, there may be times where you feel a little bit hungry. But, but feeling, getting really hungry and hangry, that should not be common. Now, on the other side of that, of just maintaining a healthy weight, that's even easier. In fact, once you have the right strategies in place, that's when you're going to really start to go, oh my gosh. I can actually eat all this. <laughs> this is great. I feel so good. This is, I've got so much more energy, all this stuff. So bottom line with surprise number two is that the most hunger you should realistically expect with healthy eating, and, and it will come mostly if you're trying to do weight loss, because um, you may not really ever feel hungry when you're doing maintenance right. But the most hunger you should feel is that by the time you feel like, okay, I really need to eat now, it should be time to eat anyway. You agree with that? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you do because you already read this. Well, actually, I haven't read all. Oh, you didn't read that one, yeah. Okay, are we on number three? Number three. Okay, wait. I think that this is arguably one of the most um, new things that people are gonna come up here. Controversial. Controversial. Come in here and say, "I can't. You can't do that. That's not true." So if anybody says um, opposite of this, then you're not listening. <laughs> yeah, listen to the whole thing before you before you just go off. So surprise number three is that treats are healthy. There's no reason to feel guilty about indulging in something that isn't optimally nutritious. We have a dog. I'm just gonna let that pause for a second. <laughs> so, or as I like to say, sweets aren't cyanide. Okay. Okay, so obviously there's a bit of moderation that comes into play, but just because you ate a sugary treat or even just a favorite comfort food, that doesn't mean that you've done something harmful to your body, Although, like ingesting cyanide, yeah. what, like that you haven't. And if people argue that, they're they want to they're that. gonna say that you have, and I, you haven't. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's not the same thing. The concept, in fact, of labeling certain foods as good or bad inherently, that's associated with guilt, anxi disordered anxiety, yo-yo dieting, yes, uh, disordered eating and leading to the actual eating disorders even. Um, so the sooner you can move away from that mindset, the sooner you can actually have a better relationship with yourself, which is pretty healthy. Yeah. So the bottom line with this number three is that eating healthy does not mean giving up your favorite foods. Treats are not bad, and in moderation, they can even be good for your mental and emotional health. Okay, I'm glad you said that, because I was going to make make that point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, number four. Surprise number four. Healthy eating can taste good. Yeah. Whether you're the type of person who craves variety, wants to eat lots of different foods, or you pretty much have the same basic three meals every day, eating healthy can help you discover a whole new world of foods that you genuinely enjoy. So I used to be super picky about eating and Megan would still describe <laughs> me as particular. Yeah. So, <laughs> so don't view me as some like health nut who's brainwashed himself into thinking, oh, this walnut and kale salad is so yummy. Cause it's not. Those are two things I don't eat. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I also know from that perspective and from my own personal experience that it's easier than you think to become a less picky eater to the point that I actually prefer more nutritious meals now, most of the time, I'm not saying always, but compared to less nutritious, most of the time I actually buy taste. I'm like, no, I'd, ra I'd rather have this oh, yeah. compared to the highly processed stuff that I used to eat. Sure. Um, there are certain things that I truly, truly love now that took some time to get used to, mm -hmm. like sweet potatoes. One of my favorite breakfasts has sweet potatoes. I used to not like them. It took me some time to get there. There are also things that I don't love or hate. I'm kind of neutral about it, but I still eat them from time to time, like lentils. It's like, eh, okay, sure. Um, but there's no reason to force yourself to eat foods that you disgust. For me, that's like green olives, for example. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna eat them for the sake of, oh, they're healthy, it's a healthy fat, so you should eat it. I, I will say, I will give it a little bit of a reality check here. Not every meal is going to be amazing either. Yep. And to expect that isn't realistic. Um, so I think when, when you're eating healthy, that having that mindset going into it will help. Like, oh, this food actually tastes good versus like expecting an amazing meal for every sure. time. Yep. The bottom line with this one is that healthy eating doesn't mean choking down dry chicken and broccoli every night. Um, mm. There are countless foods that are both delicious and nutritious. Surprise number five. Healthy eating does not take more time. Contrary to popular belief. <laughs> Unfortunately, the example most people have for eating healthy consists of weighing food, counting calories, tracking grams of protein, carbs, fiber, sodium, that does take whatever. Time. For sure, that takes a lot more time. And it is it definitely takes more time than just throwing food on your plate and moving on with your life. So the strategy that we recommend for healthy eating is much closer, practically speaking, to the throw some food on your plate method. Um, it doesn't take more time, and yet it's just as effective as tracking calories and grams, but without all the extra work. So I'm not gonna go into the details on that here because we have it all over the place, and we're happy to share if you're like, what are they talking about, just let us know. 
Um, it's a hand guide and that's what we teach. Anyway, it, it, even if you don't know our specific strategy or even if you don't use it, you do, the point is you don't have to change your entire system or even lack thereof. If you're like, I don't have a system, you don't have to change it to start making better choices. And think about it. You, you might be like, eh, he doesn't know me. But think about this. Does it really take any meal prep to eat an apple instead of a bag of chips? You don't have to prep an apple anymore. You know, you take a bite out of the apple. You have to open the bag of chips. <laughs> it takes more time to open the bag of chips than it does to grab the apple. Does it take? Does it really take any extra planning at the grocery store to grab some Greek yogurt instead of just the regular yogurt that you would normally pick? It doesn't. Same amount of time. You just have to make the intentional effort to move your hand over and grab the other thing. So those are a couple examples. He doesn't of, do the grocery shopping, but. And theoretically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if they're not right next to each other, it's still, I'm getting yogurt. I'm going to go over here for yeah. this yogurt. Okay, it's, yeah. You're still, it's not taking more time. There That's we go. the point. <laughs> Bottom line is, whatever plan you have now for choosing foods, even if it doesn't feel like you have a plan, you can use that same basic system with no extra time involved and still make better make, choices. Absolutely. Okay. Number six. We're almost there. I'm trying my drum roll again. You will be surprised about the energy that healthy eating gives you. So fast food, french fries, frozen lasagna, any processed food. Again, Chicken nuggets. Again, yes, they're not bad, but the more that your diet consists of those things, the more sluggish you're going to tend to feel. And a big part of that is because your body just isn't getting the nutrients that it needs to feel good and function well. It's not because, oh, I'm putting all this bad stuff in me. It's because you're not getting enough of the nutrients that you need that you would be getting from other foods. Yeah. Um, so just as an example, one client that Megan works with, uh, do you want to share this? Sure. Um, so he was super uh, meticulous, I'll say, uh, about getting protein and carbs and fats and like really meticulous a lot about all the foods he was eating and no exercising. Words, he eats well. Yeah, he, he's, he already eats well. Um, and then we um, changed one thing. We went from one bench. Mentioned that he's got a stressful job. Oh yeah, he's got a super stressful job. He's on call. Some nights um, he'll have to get up like we do in the morning and work all the way through the next morning. Um, so, so that makes it really tough for him. So struggling with energy. Yeah. Energy and recovering from that was really hard. Um, so the only thing we changed at, during this time period was we went from one vegetable a day to five to six servings of vegetable a day in a matter of weeks. He felt um, like his energy levels were more level throughout the day and he wasn't feeling like he needed energy drinks to get through the day and he totally stopped drinking them. Um, it was a big, big change just by adding more of those nutrients yeah. that he needed, even though he was doing all the other right things. Yep, yeah, that's that's what it was. His body was getting more nutrients, mm -hmm. and that gave him enough energy that he stopped drinking energy drinks. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Exercise, obviously, is something that helps with energy, too, but if you struggle throughout your, you know, to get through your day or you feel like you don't have the energy for your family that you want to be giving them in the evenings, you can't be present... Don't underestimate how much the foods you can that, that you eat can impact this. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line with this one is, is that when your body gets more of the nutrients it needs, as opposed to just eating less, it can have as big an effect on your energy as exercise does. Last one, number seven. Surprise about healthy eating. Now, stick with me here. You will feel better. Okay. Okay. You might not be surprised to hear that healthy eating helps you feel better, but there's something about it that will surprise you. So like I said, hang in there. You may not even realize it, but there is a part of you that feels like getting fit while it may help you feel better physically, it's going to come with some hard sacrifices. So even if you have the knowledge that healthy eating is good for you, there's still some doubt in your mind as to whether it's actually worth it mm -hmm. and for the record we totally agree that it is not worth it to get super ultra mega fit we're not talking about that we're just talking about losing some weight fitting into your clothes a little bit a little bit better being more comfortable and confident in your body things like that keeping up with your kids or grandkids and being there for them yep and and here's the surprise the sacrifices that you might have to make to get there 
they won't feel like sacrifices, mm. at least at some point. Maybe at first they might start to, but eventually they are not going to feel like, like sacrifices. First of all, since we're talking about a normal person's level of fitness, the, the sacrifices are fewer than what you think. There's really not going to be that much, not as much as what most people think. But even with the changes that you do have to make, not only will you not miss them eventually, your quality of life can be so much better. You can feel so much better than you did before. You won't want to go back. And it's not like you completely have to give up anything anyway. You can still enjoy treats and have all these th things. You can still have the same things. You're not dropping it. I add something here. When, yeah. Whenever we've had clients like go on vacation or um, they have something come up, where they can't have, they really don't have access to vegetables for a couple weeks or they haven't strength trained in a couple weeks. They notice the difference. They notice that they don't feel as better. It's really yep. quite amazing. And they're like, I can't wait to get back to my yeah. normal life. <laughs> For sure. So bottom line with this is it's not a choice between healthy eating versus enjoying life. When you do it right, you will feel your best physically, mentally, and emotionally and enjoy your life even more and not feel like you're sacrificing anything. With that in mind, there's really no reason for you to wait. This is all positive. <laughs> Why you would wait when you know all of these things are true, that it's not going to take more time, that'll make your life easier, that you'll feel everything we mentioned here, start now. And if you don't, if you're like, okay, but what do I actually do? That's why we're here. So let us know. We will help you. We will coach you. We will get you there. We'll give you the plan. We will t give you the steps. We will say, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> and it will be all of these things. It will be easy. It won't be things that are crazy difficult. It's going to be doable for real life because yeah. that's what we do. So we will see you next time. Let us know if you have any questions, comments, whatever. We'd love to talk to you. Right. Bye. Bye.